Hey everyone, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are having a lovely day. I am having quite the experience. It's filming day and this is my third time trying to film this particular video. I thought it would be fun to sit down and share with you guys the 10 palettes I've really been reaching for this spring, what I like about them and why I've been reaching for them so much. So if you're interested in seeing which products I've been using pretty frequently this season, then keep on watching. Let's go ahead and start off with palette number 10. This is the Morphe 25L Pride palette. I believe it's called Live in Color. Now I know what you're thinking, not really a spring palette, but if you follow me over on Instagram at JessAshleyBeauty, you will know that I've really been into the colorful looks lately. I think it's partially because I'm stuck inside so I can just do crazy makeup and I can also spend an absurd amount of time on my makeup so I can play around with things that I wouldn't normally use. I am already a color lover, but I have just found myself reaching for this palette so frequently, especially for this green shade right here, Nature, and then I've also been using some of these pastel shades as well. I just think this is overall a well-rounded rainbow palette, and of course, it wouldn't be a palette video if I didn't mention something rainbow palette-y. Palette number nine, this is the MAC Now and Zen eyeshadow palette. This is a nine pan eyeshadow palette that MAC came out with for Lunar New Year. If you guys watch Mel Thompson, I believe she did like a review and tutorial with this palette. I think this is just the perfect kind of classy go-to palette for spring. You have a lot of those rosier tones as well as a pop of blue and a black. So you really can do a whole lot with this palette. I think this is a really good one to quickly do your makeup and go. Or if you're doing video work calls like everyone, this is a good one to quickly do your makeup before your daily check-in. I do like the colors in this a lot. I haven't gotten to play around with it too, too much, but I am looking forward to continue using it in the future. Moving on to palette number eight, this is the Anastasia and Carly Bible palette. This came out, I believe, holiday of 2019, so this past winter. To me, when I first saw this palette, I just didn't feel like it was a winter palette. I really felt like this was supposed to be released in the spring, and I have noticed myself reaching for this palette quite often this spring. I didn't really play around with it too much before this season, but I'm super into a lot of these colors. This bottom row here is all like warm neutrals, and this top row is all cooler tone neutrals, but you have those fun pops like Mandala is this like duochrome pinky purple, and then Stev is a red. You have some fun shimmers to play around with. I think this is a really bold spring palette, so you can do some of your vibrant, very warm, summery, springy looks. I really like this one. It has neutrals and colors, so of course it's the best of both worlds. And I've just really enjoyed getting to play around with this one more. I think I've used this at least like four times in the past couple weeks. And for the amount of eyeshadow palettes I have, that's pretty good because I normally use them not that many times. Coming in at number seven, this is the Too Faced Natural Lust Palette. Now this palette holds a very special place in my heart. I actually won an award for a makeup and hair look I did on my cousin using this palette. So of course I'm gonna love this one and want it in the spring video. This packaging is just gorgeous. It has the peacock and the flowers. It's very springy, very birthy. When I think spring, I think of life. And so with all the flowers and the peacock and all the detailing, and then of course you open it up and you have all the beautiful blushy rosy colors. You have your neutrals over here and then you have pops of color like this purple and green. Um, there's like a gold and a blue. So there's a lot of things you can do with this palette. This is also a really good one to travel with if you just wanna take a palette. This I think is your go-to travel palette. So for all you spring breakers out there, I guess not this year, but you know. Theoretically, if people were going places for spring break, I think this would be a great choice to take with you. You have about everything you would need, and overall, it's just a good palette to have in your collection. I feel like I'm whizzing through all these palettes, but that's that's okay, I guess. We're on to palette number six now, though, and this is the Anastasia Norvina palette. This is where we start getting into some of my older staples. So the Norvina palette and the palette after this one that you will see have been in my collection for quite a few years now, and they still continue to be my staple spring palettes. So the Norvina palette is very unique um, compared to some of the other Anastasia palettes. The entire bottom row is matte and satin shades and the top row is all shimmery glitter shades. 
It's also a very pretty neutral purple and pink palette. And when I think spring, I think of purple, pink, coral, all of those pretty like floral shades. So to have a neutral palette with those pops of pink and purple and even like a rose gold or like a regular gold, I think this is a really good one for everyday wear. When I have to go out grocery shopping or I have to run to the store for something, I think this is a good one to just throw on. It's also really easy to use. All the colors pretty much go well with each other, so you don't have to think a whole lot about the look you're going to do. You just have to pick a matte or two and then a shimmer or two, and your look is set. So I really like this one. I've used this, like I said, for a couple years now, and every single spring I continue to pull this one out. It just it never disappoints me. We are finally at the halfway mark, so palette number five is another one I've had in my collection for a while. This is the Tarte Tartlet in Bloom palette. I used to have the regular Tartlet and the Tartlet Toasted. I have decluttered both of those prior to this video, um, but this is what it looks like. I just think this is a really pretty easy neutral palette. I know a lot of people like to do the very no makeup makeup looks in spring, and so this is a really good palette for that. You have all sorts of light neutrals, some dark ones if you wanna deep it up for a nighttime look or a more vampy look, and just about every neutral that you could need for just a super easy, quick, on-the-go look. It has the Shimmer Funny Girl here. I used to wear this, I swear, like every day in high school. Like I loved this palette. I, I don't think I could ever part with this palette, but this one just really, it speaks spring to me. Not only the packaging, but just the colors. It's so easy, it's just that fresh, glowy skin nothing too in your face, just very natural, very light, and very pretty. So I will always be keeping this one in my springtime staples, as I'm sure plenty of other people out there are as well. Moving on to palette number four, this is the ColourPop She's Got Solstice palette. Now I just reviewed this one on my channel last week, so if you're interested in watching a more in-depth review on this palette and my thoughts, you can check that one out. I will leave it both in the cards and the description below. But this is the She's Got Solstice palette. This one is really, really pretty. This one is more of a brighter neutral palette, if that makes sense. You have some rosy neutrals, but you also have like peachy brown neutrals. And then you have the most pretty shimmers. You have standard shimmer shades and then this newer formula, at least new to me, I hadn't tried this one before. This is the foiled kind of formula. This palette is the one I am wearing on my eyelids today. I really like the color story in this. I think it's really fresh and bold. Um, it's definitely on the brighter side of springtime palettes. I think this is just the nice perfect amount of punch of color with still sticking on the neutral side. I think ColourPop absolutely killed this one. It's so pretty and I've already used this one quite a few times this spring already. Moving back into the brighter side of things, this is the Huda Beauty Neon Pink Palette. This is just a cute nine pan palette. It's just gorgeous. I love pinks and purples as you saw with the Norvina and then also the Morphe Pride Palette. I just love pink and purple. So I've really been using this time to play around with some of these bolder pink and purple shades. I did a look on my Instagram a couple weeks ago that I absolutely loved, which you guys can see up here. I think this one's just super fun. It's, it's the really bright side of spring. These brighter tones really remind me of like tulips and flowers and just all sorts of fun springtime things. So I've definitely been using this one a lot as well. Moving on to the top two palettes. Now both of these I feel like are a little bit more on the controversial side. I feel like a lot of people have very varying opinions on these palettes. So number two is the ColourPop Sailor Moon Pretty Guardian palette. I know a lot of people really didn't like this palette. They said that there weren't a lot of tone variety in here. All the shades are pretty muted. Like I was saying earlier with some of the other palettes, springtime is really about like the fresh glowy skin, no makeup makeup looks. So I do like a palette like this where you can do just that. The whole bottom row is these bright pastel colors. So you have the fun colors, but you also have all of these neutrals and shimmers that you can use just for a wash of color, something very quick and easy very light, it won't look like you have a bunch of heavy makeup on your eyes, it's just very easy to use and very, very user friendly. I do really like this palette, I know it's completely sold out just about everywhere and on Poshmark they're going for about like $50 a piece right now, but if you do have one of these or you do get your hands on one of these, I do think it's the perfect spring and summer palette. And on top of that, it's just super, super cute, so like, who doesn't love this? 
And finally, my number one palette. I'm sure you guys can all guess what this is. This is the Jeffree Star Bloodlust Palette. Now, this one is one of the controversial palettes. Like I said, I feel like a lot of people had very strong opinions about this one. I was on the end of the spectrum that loved this palette. So not only is this super beautiful, it's just crushed purpley velvet um, with gold accents. It's just, it looks so luxurious. And then you open it up and then the inside looks super satiny, super pretty. It's just, it's so gorgeous. Like this is, this is like expensive feeling material. I love this palette. This has those pinks and purples that I've been loving all season long. It has a couple more neutrally shades, but it also has some fun pops of color. You have the green like in the Solstice palette. You have a red, some teal, blue. You just have all these different options, and I feel like every time I reach into this palette, I'm inspired to do a different look. I really like how this palette is laid out. I know a lot of people were saying it wasn't as purpley as some of the other palettes that he's done, or maybe they expected it to look different, but I love it. I think it can be used in conjunction with his other purple and pink palettes. It looks really good with Jawbreaker. I've used it with Alien before. You can just use this one with pretty much every single Jeffree Star palette out there, and it complements all of them just phenomenal. Phenomenal. It complements them all beautifully. I have gotten a ton of use out of this. It doesn't look like I have, but I have really been loving this palette this season, and I will continue doing so. That brings us to the end of today's video. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know down below which palettes you've been loving this season. I also hope you consider subscribing so you never miss out on another video and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye guys.